Hello, welcome to Aspire to Soar. My name is Kerry and today I'm joined by Gem from Gems Astrology and Tarot and we are going to talk all about astrology, how astrology can help you to find your soul purpose and how the planets above us affect humanity below. Welcome to the channel Gemma. Hiya, thanks. Thanks for inviting me. You're welcome. Just before we get started, please can you introduce yourself to everybody watching and let them know a bit about who you are and how you got into astrology. Hiya. So my name is Gemma Harwood and um, I got into astrology when I was a teenager, which is a while ago now. It's uh, over 20 years ago now. Um, I didn't really hear much about astrology until then, until I read a book that introduced me to astrology. And this was all about different things such as psychic awareness, the soul's journey. It had a little bit about, um, you know, the, the Kabbalah and uh, some other spiritual things. And I was just really hooked from there on. Um, I was looking at star signs, people's charts from then. Um, and yeah, ever since then, I've just been hooked. <laughs> Yeah, I found a book actually um, called Vedic Astrology, which I've um, added oh. to my, my little collection. It's really, really interesting. I just came across it and I thought, wow, yeah. That yeah is, good. I think is there different types of astrology? Is it That seems to be very specifically focused on Vedic astrology, which I think is um, an ancient one. Yeah, um, so... I focus ma mainly on Western psychological astrology, and that's kind of a, a distinction from the Eastern methods. So Vedic is more of an Eastern kind of method, and I think sometimes the, it's interchangeable with Indian astrology as a term, you know, um, over in India. Yeah. And I'm not sure if there are some kind of, maybe some differences between Vedic and Indian, um, but yeah, it's, it's more of an Eastern uh, method of astrology, so... Is that something that you find interesting? Yeah, well, I was just, I, I just came up, it's just one of those, um, I came across it while I was looking for another book and that, and I thought, oh yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to have a look at that. I like to, yeah. to have a look at it and just try and get myself a, an overview of all the different types of um, astrologies and, and different things that are out there. So yeah, yeah I just, I, I haven't read it properly yet. I've had a little flip through, but it does, it is very Eastern focused. Yeah, so I know that our charts are a little bit different um, in Vedic astrology, um, although, you know, I haven't studied it to a great extent. Um, so when we're talking about astrology, a lot of people um, who are quite new to it do think, well, astrology is just the, the mystic Meg that you get in the in the paper at the weekend and she tells you um, what's going to happen in the next week in your life and probably isn't totally relevant to you at all. <laughs> Um, yeah. So what would you say is the difference between, between that that most people know and what you do? Well, um, really, the everybody has a sun sign um, and that's what the is used when, um, you know, sun sign columnists write the columns in the newspapers. Yeah. Um, I mean, but astrology is so much more because whereas when looking at our sun signs, we can all be broken down into... 12 categories as there were 12 zodiac signs mm -hmm. um when you look at your actual natal chart for say like a reading or you you delve a bit further into astrology um you take every planet of the solar system and we have those planets in different signs or you know um, a, a range of signs over those 12 zodiac signs and so um really it's so much more because we also have our ascendant and our midhaven that changes um, by the minute of the day. And so rather than being grouped into one of 12 categories, as um, we do in the newspaper columns, we really, um, everybody's nature chart is completely different. We are really unique. And so, it, you know, it can really capture the, the essence of who you are and uh, the energies that were around when you were born. And so, yeah, that's how different it is, really. Okay, so how do you define somebody's natal chart if they if they wanted a natal chart reading? What sort of things do you take into consideration? So, um, I'm sorry. The question is, 
what kind of things do I look at when I'm reading a natal chart? Yeah, that... so if somebody came to you with it wanting a natal chart, what what would they need to give you? And then what would you be able to give them from that information? Right, okay. So um, the kind of information I need is the time of birth, yeah. date of birth, um, place of birth, which is important. Um, and the time of birth can be quite important because the houses of the natal chart are calculated on the time of birth and they can change um, quite a bit, you know, every four minutes of, of birth time. And so what the houses tell us, tell me when I'm looking at a natal chart is they give me a picture of, of kind of not just the energies that are playing out um, in the native's life, but also the area of life, say like um, home and family or finances, you know, or career, um, different areas of life and things like that. So I think it can be quite important, but um, we, we do what's known as a birth chart re rectification. And from this, we can kind of find out um, what's the most likely time of birth and we can go from there. So there is a solution if you don't know your specific time of birth, but it is one of the details that we, that I always ask for. And, you know, I, I, I always like to know, how do you know your time of birth? And um, so really date of birth, time of birth, place of birth, name. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and also, I'd, I also like to have a little conversation about um, why you're coming for the astrology reading, you know, what's um, happening in your life at the moment, you know, and how do you feel about all of this? Yeah, so you mentioned place of birth is a big factor. Why, why is that? Well, I mentioned these um, calculated points, the ascendant and the midhaven mm -hmm. in the natal chart. Um, and this can really depend on the time of birth. They do change according to time, but they can also change according to location as well. Okay. Um, okay, so the houses in the Ascendant and Midday Haven are also calculated, not just on the time of birth, but also on the place by, um, you've got the coordinates that are used to calculate the Ascendant and the Midhaven, so. Okay. Okay, so it's fascinating that even so much yeah. as the place where you're born it can affect who you are and it's in a, in, a, in a sense is meant to be. Yeah, and there's also what's known as relocation astrology and that's say, say you move home and you move to a different country. Um, so it's known that the kind of energies are, could be affecting you in different areas of life then because, um, because then you're in a different location. And so that's a whole other branch of, of astrology. Wow. So everything really has an effect. It's like um, a domino. So you make one move and it can affect yeah. everything else. I mean, it's, I, I wouldn't say it's such a great effect moving from within the country. But yeah. I mean, you know, it comes more into play, you know, if you move in long distances, yeah. I think. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So when people come to you for a natal chart reading, um, can you tell them their their sole purpose in life, or can, not tell them, but give them clues about who they are, why they're here, what they could be doing? Well, um, I feel that you really can get more in touch with your soul's purpose and desires by studying your natal chart, mm -hmm. um, because really it, it's just a language that reflects who you are at a core level, at your most basic core level, mm -hmm. and then being in touch with this language and seeing this language outside of yourself, it helps to facilitate um, your intimate relationship with who you are. You know, it, it helps you to really get in touch with and, and consciously think about who, who you are at a core level. And, and this can be really trans transformative. It can be a, um, you know, a really transformative experience and an enlightening journey of self-discovery. But there's also a method of astrology that focuses on the evolution of the soul called evolutionary astrology, wow. which to me, um, you know, is really fascinating. And with this, you can delve into your consciousness evolution, your soul's purpose. This is all it focuses on. And this is what it focuses on, sorry. And it even goes into your past lives and the karma that you may have brought forward with you from past lives and things like that. So, Wow, and all that can be, they can calculate all that just from the same basic information. 
yeah i mean you you calculate the natal chart in the same way yeah um they might use different house because there are different house systems for that, that can be used in different um methods of astrology but yeah it's, it's really the same natal chart but it's a different approach and uh, it's one that i i do hope to study more in the future but i mean I really do recommend uh, looking into that if you want to look at your soul's purpose and evolution. Is um, that something, sure. sorry, is that something that somebody could do at home once they had their natal chart done? Or is it best to stick with somebody who can delve into it properly with you? I mean, I think that just depends on the person. If if you want to go and study astrology by a, for yourself, you know, I really do recommend that even if you do go to a, a, a for an astrology reading. I mean, I've been studying studying astrology for a long time, yet yeah. I might still want to go and see another astrologer because we all know different things and we, we uh, yeah, I mean, we never stop learning, we never stop. I would recommend looking into your own chart, definitely anyway, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Nothing to look at. Okay, okay. Um, so at the moment, we are, we're in a global situation at the moment. And that a lot of people are saying is a time when we can use for reflection. And yeah. it's been called the time of the great awakening. And I know at the end of last year, there was a particular time when people were really focused on when it came into the winter solstice of 2020. And in particular, with what was happening with the planets in, in the solar system and the way that they were lining up. Um, did you have or do you have a view on what actually happened on the winter solstice and how that was affecting and will affect people going forward? Yeah, well, um, the Great Conjunction, it's known as, and there was a lot, of, a lot of things in the papers and in the media about this, wasn't there? There was a big buzz about it. Yeah. And it, it really is a big deal because um, even astronomically, it's a big deal as well. Um, because these Jupiter-Saturn conjunctions, they come together uh, in the sky once every around 20 years. Okay. And for the last 200 years, they've come together in Earth signs. That's uh, Taurus, Virgo and Capricorn okay. or Capricorn. And because these conjunctions, they do mark the start of different cultural and political movements and eras, you know, um, this is really significant because now what's happening is, apart from them coming together in Libra in 1981, um, they now, it happened in Aquarius at zero degrees of Aquarius on the 21st of December. And from now on, for the next 200 years, there'll be an air signs. So that's um, Libra, Gemini and Aquarius. And the moon and air sign, this is more about um, communication and technology and anything um, that, that might open society's mind to different things such as, um, you know, astrology or different um, spiritual methods and the occult and anything new. And, and with the age of the internet happening, um, you know, at this time as well and the age of technology, you know, it's really, you know, it really mark, marks the start of a forward evolution in, in these kinds of fields so yeah it's really exciting yeah and that's what people talk about when they're referring to we're going into the age of Aquarius is that what people are referring to yeah um some do I mean there are different to be honest there are different takes on what the age of Aquarius actually means in astrology so that would be a whole new thing to talk about <laughs> I'm, I'm sure we could do a whole separate interview on that but um yes yeah, so, yeah I mean it is it is kind of an age of Aquarius that we're in this year and, and right now going forward and this does matter is, is an important um, part of this you know the conjunction which happened in Aquarius because we've also got Saturn now in Aquarius and Pluto will be moving into Aquarius as well over the next decade sometime over that you know of the next um I'd say yeah eight eight years ten years or something so so yeah so there's a lot of Aquarius energy going to be happening Okay, and so that means a lot more that Aquarian energy is related to technological advances and becoming more open to that and embracing technology in, in new ways and different ways. Yeah, and, and kind of um, 
the kind of subjects that over maybe the last 200 years have been kind of buried and, and silenced and, um, you know, due to kind of um, the government and um, kind of religion and Christianity and, and you know what I mean, um, just the kind of subjects that say tarot, um, astrology, you know, anything occult that you might not have been as open about previously, you know, all these kind of things is going to become more into the open, I think. And it's just going to become more widespread and popular. Um, and, it, and it definitely is. I mean, you can see it happening now. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, there's definitely a lot more, I think say a lot more tarot going on. I've seen a lot more tarot and a lot more people channeling as well and being able to tune in to alternative energies that yeah. that do seem to be around us that that we can't see but we're able to all of a sudden tune into different frequencies because we are we are electrical beings we are you know there's, there's uh, that's all you know we are electrical our brains are electrical and we run on a frequency and so what what's possible now is that we have the ability to tune into different frequencies and be able to accept them does that is that yeah definitely with, with what you're saying yeah definitely more more in touch with this um kind of side of life that i mean we've all kind of neglected our um spiritual beings haven't we um as a society i, I think in the western world over kind of for, for a while now and you know i think it's time to get more in touch with that now and definitely and, and do some kind of healing at a deep level that is real that we're really being called to do right now yeah yeah and i think a lot of people are hearing that and it's confusing for them because they don't really understand how to go about it or what to do and i also think that that's one of the in my personal opinion one of the significances of what's happening at the moment in the world is that it's really pushing people and triggering people into having to deal with trauma and the way the way we process trauma and what we do particularly after this um pandemic has uh, drifts away there's going to be a lot more trauma that people need to heal as well and people are going to have to find ways to deal with it yeah definitely yeah and and that's one way that this kind of era is really going to help because it, i think it's going to help because um Aquarius's rule at Uranus is really all about um, getting in touch with your core truth and uh, you know you, you have to be really genuine with yourself and I think it's really going to help us to get in touch and to spread information and awareness, awareness about this kind of thing yeah definitely after the pandemic we need that. <laughs> yeah for sure and I think it makes me happy on a personal level to think about how these sorts of changes could affect us as a society on a whole if instead of hiding our trauma and dragging it around with us all the time and if we can figure out ways to release it and let it go how it can transform the society and the world that we live in and what a different place it could be it could be yeah yeah, yeah. and that is really exciting when you look at the uh, the future in that way yeah yeah definitely um, so with the lineups that are happening I know I know that they are still continuing and there's a lot of planetary um changes going on as we as we go in like you said into the next year six months the next two years um if you were going to look at the next six months um and the planetary changes that that are going to occur does it give you any clues about how humanity might be affected going forward over through the next six months and and um things that might happen or occur for us well we did have a lot of heavy alignments last year with um with pluto jupiter and saturn to the last degrees of capricorn and um, mm -hmm. you know with those meeting together and 2020 was something that um we were looking to for a long time as astrologers we were saying you know it's going to be a big year there's going to be a lot happening that year and it was you know it was unprecedented and what's happening this year now, I mean, in the aftermath of that, we have, um, I, you know, it's much, much more easy, much less heavy. Um, but what the main thing that is happening this year is Uranus square Saturn. And that first happened on the 17th of February. 
and it will happen again on June the 14th and December the 24th this year. Okay, um, okay so really, we're, um, Eunice is the ruler of Aquarius, it's coming into play here again. And then you've got Saturn, who really, um, you know, Saturn is really about the structures in the government and all the kind of restrictions you can see it in that way yeah. um, you know, and the st structures that have been built over a long time and um, within society mm -hmm. that we all find kind of like live by and yeah. to, you know on a day-to-day -day basis and so what yours does um as a planet especially with the square aspect you know we might see a lot of disrupt disruptions in this um and it will really call for us to take action as a society when we're confronted with the aftermath, the problems that have come as an aftermath to what happened with the pandemic last year. Yeah. So we've got so many people working from home now and it, um, so many changes that we've all had to, you know, live with and, and to come to terms with. And now what's going to happen this year really um, with this planetary alignment is... Um, we're just going to have to make a lot of changes and, and adapt to that and um yeah and with, with Uranus we'll probably be um really we might be able to be really inventive you know and adaptive and you know yeah so there's a possibility of so changes is the <laughs> is a sort of yeah. is a theme well, of of the next yeah. six months um but a possibility of maybe not directly in the next six months but going forward that we might have to take a look at these structures that have been held in place for so long and what sort of, what underpins them and the way that they and us work together. Yeah. And what's really outdated now, because when Uranus comes into aspect with another planet or into a certain part of your nasal chart, um, it really can highlight what's outdated and what's no longer needed. It's all about um, the future. It's all about a progressive way of thinking. And so all because that's so opposite to the, you know, what Saturn means, which is all about the structures that have been built for so long. Yeah. Um, what what's really happening here is that um, these will be highlighted, the things that aren't working for us anymore after last year. And Eunice is also about freedoms. It's about um the new freedom, senses of freedom that we'll be feeling this year. Yeah, after you know after we're not really having much freedom last year. So that will be highlighted as well. And how we're we going to go about that. Yeah, particularly I think in um, the UK as well, where we are, you know, we're one of the countries that have suffered heavily from a loss of freedom, I think, um, over the last 12 months. Um, yeah. It's been quite hard for the people that, that live here. And like you say, being able to, to gain that back and, and then take um, a, a a sort of introspective look at what actually happened and if if people are happy with I guess with with that going forward and and then they can start deciding whether there needs to be change in the way things happen I suppose it's that, yeah. that perspective isn't it of being able to to come out of it reclaim your freedom and then and then look at what happened yeah definitely and it, there's also something else that might um that I think is it signifies and that I mean because Uranus really signifies astrology I mean it's really astrology is really ruled by Uranus really wow. um and perhaps we will be called the government will be called to notice astrology this year because um you know Saturn signifies the government and because they're coming into the square aspect mm -hmm. um, which is actually a tension aspect um and and there are ten the you know, you'd imagine the tension between the government, the constructs and astrology, because it's so, I mean, it's unregulated up to now for the most part. Um, the government doesn't really notice astrology. <laughs> I think so. And, and so I just do wonder if this year that might happen to some degree. Um, you know, astrology might become so popular because yeah. so, it is really rapidly growing that the government do you know they, they are kind of called to notice yeah yeah I have to say so I, there's that um phrase that I've heard quite a lot over the past um six to twelve months of you know millionaires don't use astrology but billionaires use astrology 
and they oh. understand astrology. I've heard that. Do you know that's come quite a few times? Quite a few people have said that. So you know, people oh, really? at the government level, and you know, don't don't you know, they don't they don't want anything to do with astrology. But billionaires. Oh yeah, I think I, I have heard it now that you mentioned that. Yeah, <laughs> because um, because the kings used to have their own astrologers back yeah. in the day. <laughs> yes, which is and really I think... interesting. I think that that it was you know we had astrologers in the royal palaces and they were and they were relied on and then all of a sudden. Yeah, yeah, and there's a really good, um, you know, there's a really good, um, yeah, there's a, there's a big thing about that, <laughs> yeah, um, sorry, my mind just went blank for a okay. yeah, there's, there's a, yeah, there was, um, it was kind of like the dark ages happened, and it was kind of pushed down, astrology was really pushed yeah. down for a long time, and now it, it's kind of being brought back into popularity, isn't it, Um for the for the last maybe well it started to come maybe the last hundred years wasn't it yeah yeah and it's certainly interesting like you say when when you talk about the fact that astrologers have been waving flags and saying you know something's going to happen and and you knew and and when it comes to to things like that it's it's proven evidence for people when it's been spoken about for so long by somebody that something's going to happen and then it does it's it's like that proof and that evidence that people need to be able to validate that oh actually there is some that you know there is something here and I, I can I can look to it and I can trust it yeah and that th this um awareness of astrology is really really might bring that as well bring more widespread view of that yeah yeah from that angle really yeah definitely and it's, it's like I said it's I find it exciting. There was a few times when you when you've been talking and you've said things, and I get goosebumps. And I, <laughs> because, I mean, it sounds it it feels it feels good to me, and it feels true to me from from what you've said, and which I find quite yeah. exciting. And so, is this something you you find yourself? Um, I mean, you've got your Vedic astrology book to read, yeah. haven't you? To get stuck into, have you yeah. have you read some of that yet? Or uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I started, well, I've read the first <clears throat> first few chapters, but because it's more Eastern philosophy based, it's um, it's given me a lot of lifestyle advice first uh, about um, the way the way that you should eat and spirituality and and things oh, yeah. like that before it actually gets to anything. So I haven't actually got to to there, but I think that's the main thing with when when you deal with any sort of Eastern practice. I think it's always comes back. Uh, yeah, that's what I love. I love that. Yeah, about Eastern practices. Yeah. Yeah, they always draw it back yeah. to your lifestyle, your diet, your 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 overall health. I think. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, that's one thing I, I was wondering about before we go. I will let you go. Um, the planetary alignments and the things that are happening can they affect our our bodies and the way we feel, or is that individual? Because I know, you know, for myself personally, I can only talk about me, but. Um, there's a heaviness sometimes um, going through different periods of time. Um, it definitely feels like there's a heaviness, and it's um, it becomes harder for my body to to deal with daily life. And then and then there's a lightning again, and then it's you know it's okay, and that might just be me. Um, but um, yeah. I have a feeling that it might not be, and I was wondering if that can be anything to do with the way the planets are, or is that something totally different? Yeah, definitely. I do think that, um, it, you know, it could be to do with the way the planets are aligned in relation to your natal chart, um, because, you know, you can have a look to where they are in relation to your natal chart to see, um, you know, why, why am I feeling like this today? Um, you know, I'm feeling great today. That might be because I've got Jupiter on my descendant or, you yeah. know, Jupiter conjunct sun. Um, currently, I'm going through my Pluto opposite sun and that is a heavy transit. So, um, you know, it, it can be, you know, there can be a lot of um, heavier, deeper things, emotional things, psychological things to work through at that time. And, yeah. and, and that's what Pluto can bring about, you know. So, yeah, definitely. There, there are certain planets um, that will kind of energet energetically bring about, you know, just more of a happy feeling. <laughs> Whereas, um, yeah, and, and because, I mean, there are all the planets in the solar system to look at, so each of them have, has their own different flavour. Yeah. So, um, so, yeah, so it's not just a case of um, feeling happy or, you know, feeling light and buoyant and versus feeling 
kind of like you know you've got some heavy things to work through there's also Saturn um, brings you know Saturn is all about responsibilities so say you're going through a Saturn transit you might have a lot more responsibilities than usual at that time so yeah so it is quite um there are quite a few different things to look at so it's so it'd be a good idea if people wanted to sort of understand the way they were feeling so maybe for them to take a good look at their natal chart either with you or, or investigate it on their own um, and once they can get a good view of their natal chart then they can any given day when you're feeling a bit oh this isn't quite right you can go and delve back into it and and get a better picture of that yeah definitely so um and so if you know what's happening at the time astrologically mm-hmm. um knowing where the planets are in alignment with your natal chart which we refer to as transits we call them transits and um so like if you if you are looking at your year ahead transits or if you know what's happening for your year ahead you can um you can really see what's going on and why um and, and sometimes a really core level you know you, you can really help you to understand what's going on for you um you know at a deeper level through the understanding of your natal chart and the intrinsic way your natal you relate to your natal chart energetically so um with your everybody everybody's character and everybody's natal chart responds differently so you might respond differently to your Saturn conjunct sun transit than what I do yeah so even though we're going through the same transit so to understand your natal chart first before you look at transits that can really help to understand why you're responding to um such a transit on this particular day and not not just why you're responding to it um how you can understand it and how you can work through it and how you can um make the best of that transit and what that, not only that, but what that planet is calling you to learn at that time and what, you know, how are the best ways to respond for your future? Yeah. 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 So, yeah. It feels, <clears throat> to me, it feels, it feels like it could be quite empowering, which is, you know, it's one of the things that, it's one of the things I like about EFT as well, is that it, you can empower yourself. You give yourself back the power. I am in control. I know what I'm doing, I know what's going on, and I know what's best for me, and which I think is just so, it's so needed. Yeah, definitely, yeah, yeah, it really um, helps you to be in the know and to, and to feel more conscious and aware of everything that's going on, so, so really, I, I did mention I'm in my Pluto opposite sun transit right now I've been preparing for this for the last couple of years wow (laughs) I I have um, because I've been um, you know anticipating it it's a big transit not everybody will ever have this transit Pluto opposite sun because that's how big the transit is because Pluto is moving so slowly through the chart yeah and when if you if you ever do have your Pluto opposite sun transit it will only be once in a lifetime so yeah. it is a once in a lifetime transit and so this is why I've been preparing for it and my knowledge of astrology has helped me to prepare for it in the ways that um hopefully for me will help me to make the most of this transit and not kind of be not kind of have any you know too many big surprises you know too many big um, surprises that I really wouldn't know how to deal with because Pluto really represents a very deep unconscious part of ourselves and yeah. you don't, you can't always tap into that um consciously you can't always understand that and so it really it really has helped definitely yeah wow okay it's just, it just it just feels it feels exciting and thank you Gemma for talking to me about this today I think if one thing that people can take from it is is there's there's a way that you can you can empower yourself and it's exciting and, yeah. and interesting at the same time to be able to find out all these things about yourself um, and your soul and why you're here and why you're possibly here and you know what what you can do going forward I think if there's anything that people need right now it is it is ways to empower themselves and to bring themselves back up again so yeah and thank, thank you so much for inviting me today I've really enjoyed meeting you and I, I'd also like to add that um I, I did one of your EFT videos, you, you do, is it um, Emotional Freedom Technique, yes. is it called? Yes. Yeah, the, 
like I said, with my Pluto transit, I've also have, have an important Uranus transit at the moment as well. And this, this brings about a lot of changes in my life. And I did your um, tapping video on changes and it yeah. really helped. You know, I found it really helpful. Um, and I recommend anybody, you know, who's watching this video to go and try them out. Uh, Thank you. Oh, that's that. Yeah, I, you know, and I love doing those videos. And one of the main things I want to give to people is the fact that you can, I guess it's my theme at the moment, you can empower yourself, you can do, you can do this. It's, you know, you can work with somebody like me one to one if you want to, if you've got trauma that you want to pull out and we want to deal with it. But otherwise, you know, you don't have to, you can empower yourself, you can take these yeah. videos. And then you can run with them. You get the general theme of them as well. And you can, you can run with them. And it's just, I started off doing them as a backup for people who work with me because um, people like to still see me and, and to, tap, to tap with me at the same time. But I, I, after that, I thought, you know what? So many people could benefit from this. I want to share it with as many people as possible because once you can empower yourself, I think that's the main theme is to be able to take all these different things that are available now and pull them together and be able to really take them into you and understand that you are the powerful one and you can do it. It's all there for you. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. And I'm so pleased that you're finding the changes one works. I like that one. It's, and I thought it was so appropriate for this time in general as well and all the things that are different right now. Yeah, and I think we're all going through a lot of changes right now. So, yeah. Definitely, this yeah. it's helpful. Yes. Good. I'm so pleased. Um. So, Gemma, if people want to find you, where can they find you? Okay. So, um, my website address is vineastrology.com. Um, and it's the same for Instagram, Twitter, Facebook at vineastrology. So, um, yeah, Excellent. you can find me there. Excellent. What I'll do is I'll put all the links as well, just in the description box below. So, if anybody wants to find you and have a look at. Um, your work so I know on your website you've got a lot of articles that you write as well on there so people can have a delve into that if they're interested yeah of course yeah yeah, yeah. excellent I'll pop all them below oh thank you very much for being here today I really do appreciate it yeah